Welcome back Physics 30. So this is FM 2.5, Newton's third law. So this is the third law we'll be looking at. Again, the first law is the law of inertia. Inertia, object at rest, stay at rest, or object in motion stays in motion with a constant velocity unless a force acts on it. And then we looked at the second law, which could be summarized as F net equals MA. Or if we're speaking in terms of acceleration, uh, the larger the force that's applied to an object, the higher the acceleration. Or the higher the mass that we have to push, the slower the, the lower the acceleration. So inversely related. So now we'll look at Newton's third law of motion. Give an example that illustrates this. So at any time a force is exerted on an object, that force is caused by another object. So if we take a look here, whenever you have a force, you can kind of think of forces come in pairs. If I apply a force on a table using my hand, the table applies a force directly back on my hand. And you know that's true because if you hit something, you feel it. That object feels it, plus you feel it. So Newton's third law is whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal force, but in the opposite direction of the first force. So you may recall this as being the action-reaction force. In, in TV, on TV shows or movies, they often say for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. But what that really means is that if you exert a force on one object, that object exerts an equal and opposite force on you. So a key to correct application of the third law is that the forces are exerted on different objects. So make sure you don't use them as if they're acting on the same object. So for example here, if you look at this lady pushing on uh, the wall here, if she pushes to the right on the wall, the wall pushes back on here. And of course, there's an action-reaction set up here too. The skates push down on the ground, and the ground pushes back up on her. But wearing skates kind of minimizes that action-reaction. It minimizes the friction as well. So quite often we think of, oh, we're just pushing ourselves off the wall. But you're not, because you are pushing forward. And if you push forward on the wall, the wall pushes back on you. And of course, we don't experience that much because we are wearing, wearing running shoes. We can set up an action reaction here to prevent us from feeling an acceleration from here. But once you have ice skates on, or if you're on rollerblades, or if you're on a skateboard, you can see that. Another thing that I like to do in class is to show a little demo in which I'm standing on a skateboard, which is very dangerous for me. And if I have a box, okay? So if I apply a force on box, that box applies an equal and opposite force on me. And of course, if I'm on wheels here, it's difficult to set up the action-reaction force of my foot and the ground, so I will accelerate backwards for that point in time. So you don't have to point, you don't have to push on something that's physically attached to the ground. You could just simply throw a box across the room, and its reaction force will push you in the opposite direction. So of course, as I'm talking about walking on the ground here. So when I push on the ground, I push a force on the ground, and the ground pushes a force back on me. So that's basically what keeps me standing and allows me to walk. And of course, if I, once I'm standing on a skateboard or have roller blades on, or if I have ice skates on, it's more difficult to set up a big action-reaction force. Rocket propulsion can be explained using Newton's third law. Hot gases from combustion spew out of the tail of the rocket at high speeds. The reaction force is what pushes you forward. And note, the rocket doesn't need anything to push. So like here I'm pushing a box, and if we're throwing out gases, we don't need anything to push. So let's see why on the next page. So helpful notation to help us sort this out would be have a subscript here. So if I look over here, if I'm looking at just the, the simple process of walking, 
the force, uh, let's see, the horizontal force exerted by the ground on the person's foot. So foot pushes back on ground, and then ground pushes back on foot. You can think of the two objects in there. So we could relate it like this, and this is a key point. Let's put a star right here. Put a star right here. So if object A exerts a forward for force on object B, then the reaction would be just switch the two objects around, switch the direction of the force, and you've got it. So person pushes backwards on ground, then ground pushes forward on person. So that's what we have happening there. And if I go back to this page, I apply a downward force on the desk, and the desk applies an upward force on my hand. Over here, girl applies a forward force on the wall, wall applies a backward force on the girl. Or a guy applies a forward force on the box, box applies a backward force on the guy. And over here, the two objects would be rocket and gas. Rocket pushes gas downwards, then gas pushes back on rocket upwards. So that's how that works. And this little formula here, or, or idea here of how to figure it out, will work for everything. So the action reaction force are equal in magnitude, so equal in size, but of course opposite in direction. So you may want to put a little star there as well. So if we look at a bunch of scenarios here, we should be able to indicate an action force and a reaction force. So the first one, a badminton racket hitting a birdie. So of course the action force is kind of the force that we want to have happen. So we'll call, uh, let's see, so racket, so our, our objects are racket and uh, birdie. So racket exerts a forward force on birdie. So we have our two objects, and we have our force and its direction. So if we just change those around, birdie, instead of exerting a forward force, do the opposite. Exerts a backward force on the racket. And of course the racket doesn't come flying backwards to your face because then there's another action reaction force between your your uh, the racket and your bicep muscle so they they're always coming into play here and possibly neutralizing another force from from somewhere else okay so maybe if you want to stop the video and just try the rest of these see if you can do that and then come on back to the video okay so if you had a chance to do that the thing that we want to have happen here with rowing a boat, our boat oar, or our paddle, exerts, and if you've ever gone canoeing or boating, you know that you're pushing backwards on the water. Backward force on the water. And of course the water, so interchange the two objects, so water and oar, exerts forward force on the oar. And of course the oar is attached to you and you're attached to the boat so the whole system goes moving forward. Uh, shooting a gun. So gun exerts a forward force on a bullet. And of course, interchange, interchange these two objects around. Bullet is here, gun is here, and bullet exerts a backward force on gun. And of course, the gun is attached to you, so your arm goes flying backwards, because it's hard to set up that bicep and gun action-reaction system. And also, you can think of it as, uh, in all of these scenarios, we have F net equals MA, right? We have F net equals MA. 
So if I look at uh, the acceleration that something experiences, I have, uh, so the forces are equal, right? The forces are equal, but uh, the mass of a bullet is really, really tiny, and the mass of a gun is really, really big compared to the bullet. So if I take two identical numbers and divide by a really small one, I get a large acceleration, and that's what the bull bullet feels as it's going through the barrel of the gun. And of course, the gun, it has the same force exerted on it as the bullet, but it's massive, so it experiences a smaller acceleration. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. It's dependent upon mass and the force, and of course, the forces are the same. Okay, I think we'll stop the video there. We have a couple more examples, and uh, then we'll come back and do them.